My friends traveled six hours to come help me raise these timbers, and after turning a three hour job into a three day job, they may never visit again. People have been building timber frames for thousands of years. I've been building them for three days. Here we are at the base of the 2B cabin. You can learn all about that in previous videos. What we're doing today is we've got these timbers that I cut on the sawmill. I wanna tie these together using mortise and tenon joinery. So what the heck is a mortise and tenon? This is the mortise. The way I remember it is you dig a hole to put people with rigor mortis in it. Tenon, I have no idea how to memorize that one other than it's not the mortise. But you got your mortise, which is the hole, and you got the tenon, which slides into the hole, making a very strong joint. Once the two are joined together, then you can use pegs to go through both of them to tie the whole thing together so it will never come apart. This isn't the first time I've utilized the mortise and tenon joinery. I actually made this planer cart to put my cheap planer on, and to connect the legs to the base of the cart, I used mortise and tenon. It was a learning experience. I used these chisels here, and this whole thing was made out of poplar, so it was pretty easy to work with. I foolishly told my friends, this is gonna be a great weekend. We're just gonna spend a couple hours Friday morning, a couple hours Saturday morning. We'll have this thing all put together and in the air. We can spend the rest of the time drinking beer, hanging out on the lake, just having fun. Yeah, sorry guys. This is where my first mistake comes into play making this current timber frame section. I decided I'm gonna use the same chisels because it's the only ones I have. The thing about these chisels are they're not very long. I've got an eight inch piece of white oak to get through and this chisel's maybe a little over three inches tall. So once I get all the way down and maxed out, it's gonna dig the handle into the side and push into the wood, which is not ideal. On top of that, I have not mastered the art of sharpening chisels yet. The first thing that we did was mark off our mortise and tenon on our wood. We started with the oak and we made our mortise mark and we decided to start drilling some holes to take out some material. Well, with our little bit and our little drill, we decided, you know what, let's not even worry about it. That's gonna take forever. Let's just start chiseling. Why not? It's gonna be fun. So Nate, Johnny and I, we started chiseling and chiseling. Pretty soon, Nate would take over and do some chiseling. Johnny would take over, do some chiseling. You see where this is going. The best part is, is it was 90 degrees and humid. Perfect day for the lake. So here we are, laboring away. Man. Fast forward to 2 a.m. We're still <laughs> chiseling away at this darn thing. We are exhausted. This is turning into a nightmare very quickly, but the three of us have no give up in us, so we're gonna make this work. The next morning, we came out with fresh eyes, fresh minds, and I decided, forget this. I'm gonna use the chainsaw and I'm gonna make a plunge cut and get rid of as much material as I can. I'm no chainsaw carver, so I was a little bit apprehensive if I could even make a straight plunge cut. But, and guess what? In a few minutes, we took off more material than we took all day the day before. Should have just started there. Live and learn. Sorry guys, again. Once we had the material removed, we just used the chisel again and cleaned up the mortise. And now we were ready to cut our first tenon. Again, wrong tools for the job. I whip out my little Japanese handsaw, which is not actually big enough to cut a tenon in a piece of wood this big. But we went for it. We took the little saw and started hacking away, trying to get that tenon cut. We ended up having a curved tenon because the blade, we were pushing more than pulling, which is not how you use a Japanese pull saw. Once we got that tenon shaped, we were pretty sick of using that little handsaw. This thing is just a small consumer saw. The blade's kind of shot. I've been using it for a lot of stuff. So we started cutting with that. Again, not the right tool for the job. It would have been nice to have a more powerful saw with a very sharp blade. But it took off material. We made a bunch of relief cuts and then smacked it with a hammer. Did I mention I need to learn how to sharpen tools? After we got that done, we had to cut our other mortise in the white pine. The day gets away from us. We're chiseling, plunge cutting, doing everything we can. And before we know it, it's 2 a.m. once again, but at least now we're ready to slide these things together. So keeping with the theme of this project, I pull out the wrong tool, this big old sledgehammer made out of metal, and start smacking the tenons and the mortises together. Timber framers use a wood mallet, that way they don't mar up their timbers and dent them or break them. But we use what we got, and eventually that satisfaction of the two oh. joints sliding together, that we were done with that part, and it was time to go to sleep. The next morning, my friends were due to leave. They wanted to get back home. So I told them, man, you guys just get out of here. I'll raise them by myself. And Nate looks at me and he goes, no, we are doing this today. We're here. We did not go through all this trouble to not get the satisfaction of this thing being up in the air. So the three of us grabbed a white pine log, put it vertical in the air to make what I would call a mast, which we're going to pull off of. We shored it up with a bunch of scrap wood. Then Nate climbed up, put the snatch block up there. 
We took a rope, tied it from the beam of the timber frame section up through the snatch block on the post, down to the RTV where we could just pull it up. We nailed a couple two by fours to the end so Johnny and Nate could control it as I lifted it up with the RTV. And we put another post on the feet so it couldn't kick out as we pulled it. And wouldn't you know it, it worked perfectly. That thing went right up in the air and the job was done. After all this suffering, here's what I learned. First of all, get a chisel that's made for timber framing. They're long, they're as wide as the mortise should be. That's step one. Step two, learn how to use your chainsaw to cut as much of the joinery as you can, take as much material off as you can. That way you're not wasting so much time chiseling away, drilling, using what you got. Step number three, learn how to sharpen tools for God's sake. How hard is it? It's just a skill that needs to be mastered. As much time as I spend using tools, I need to learn how to sharpen them. So that's the next big thing on my list of things to do. Number four, always expect projects to take way longer than I think. This trailer I'm sitting in right here, I thought it was gonna take three or four months. It took over a year to build this thing out. You would think I would have learned from that and here we are again doing the same thing. Growing up here in Iowa, I've been surrounded by timber frame buildings my whole life and I didn't even realize it. All these old barns from the 1800s, they're all put together using timber frame methods, beautiful joinery, ax hand hewn beams made out of oak or pine or whatever they had around. Amazing. It's the reason why I want to build our house out of a timber frame. After doing one weekend of timber framing and making as many mistakes as I made, I have a huge respect for what they've done. The fact that these barns are still standing and they're still beautiful. And if you go all over the world, there's buildings that are over a thousand years old that are timber framed. I'm so grateful for all my friends and family that let me take on these ridiculous projects. And that goes for you guys too watching. We'll see you in the next video.